Hey guys, in today's video, I am going to show you how I made these amazing Disney themed shortbread cookies. More specifically, these are Mickey Mouse themed. We have the Mickey Mouse ears, the stars, the shoes, everything. Here are the cutouts that I used. It's kind of like small to medium cutouts, so this is what I used. I ordered this from Amazon, so let's get started. With any amazing shortbread recipe, it calls for a lot of butter. I actually ended up doubling this recipe. So if you just wanna make a huge batch of um, shortbread batter, um, go ahead and use four sticks of butter. And for this recipe, I'm actually not using my whisks this time. I'm using my regular mixture attachments because this, mixture is going to get very dense, especially when we start adding the flour. And you want to cream the butter until it looks like this, light and fluffy. After your butter is nice and fluffy, we're going to add 2 thirds cup of sifted powdered sugar. And just sift that in there. I'm just using my regular sifter for this part. And then guess what? We're gonna mix again until it's really nice and incorporated. It's going to look a little bit dry at first, but do not worry. Once the sugar is really incorporated into the butter, it will start to make this beautiful cream texture. Um, it kind of takes a few minutes and then right before your eyes, it starts to cream up, kind of like what it's doing now. It'll start to clump together and cream really, really nicely. See, just like that, what did I tell you guys? So once your butter and powdered sugar is combined, we're going to go ahead and add the flour and vanilla, and that's it. That's all this recipe calls for. It's what I use for the base of all my flavored shortbreads. So, I mean, the simpler, the better for a shortbread recipe, truly, they come out amazing and buttery and flaky, and I cannot recommend enough. Then once you add your two cups flour, then add one half teaspoon of vanilla, and then you are done. Go ahead and mix that. This batter is going to look very, very dry, but once you start kneading it with your hands, the butter and the flour and the vanilla will really start to combine and the butter in the process will melt and will help hold together the dough. I found that the easiest way to knead the dough and make sure everything came together was to um, put it on top of a piece of a large piece of plastic wrap and knead it from there. I think kneading it in the bowl would be messy and I didn't necessarily want to use my hands. So this is a great option, especially if you're like prone to messes. Um, I think this will really help um, keep your dough in place. Just make sure you're taking your time mixing it. Like I've said before, it's not a race, so make sure you take your time kneading it and making sure it's well combined. Okay, and we have a really nice dough that has formed. Um, when it starts looking like this, I will just go ahead and wrap it up. If it doesn't cover the entire surface, um, use a second layer of plastic wrap just to be safe. You can put this in the freezer and save for later, or you can go ahead and work with this dough now. If you're going to use this dough immediately like I did, 
um, go ahead and just use it immediately. Don't put it in the freezer or else you're going to get cracks in your dough because the butter has solidified. So it's going to be a little bit drier and it will tend to break. So in this clip, um, I'm realizing that now. So if you're going to use this dough, um, do your cookie cutouts and then put them in the freezer before baking so they hold their shape. And a trick that I saw was to use your hands instead of using the sides of the rolling pin. Actually put your hands on the rolling pin to get that really level um, shortbread. And once you have your desired thickness, go ahead and put your cookie cutouts on the dough so you know um, where you're going to have your cookies placed. And then after that, this is super um, simple. Just move it around a little bit to make sure that the dough will lift from the stencil. Go ahead and put it on your pan. And then after you've cut out your cookies, put them in the freezer uh, for a couple minutes just so they're a little bit more firm before you put them in the oven and they don't spread And once your cookies are ready to go in the oven have your oven set at 325 degrees for about 20 minutes for my cookies it took more about 25 minutes but I checked them at the 20 minute mark just to make sure and then I added in another five minutes So they really got that um, nice beautiful golden um, tint to them And this is what they look like once they're done baking and once they have cooled. As you can see, they have a very slight golden tint around the edges. That's what you're really looking for, a really um, perfect cookie where it's not overbaked or underbaked. And in my opinion, it's the perfect texture. And as you can see, they have their shape. They didn't spread. Um, it might be a little bit rounded on the edges, but I prefer a more natural cookie more than a sharp edge cookie. Um, I don't know. It's just you, totally your preference and what you are looking for, but um, I feel like they came out beautiful and they're ready for decorating. Now that we have our cookie cutouts done, we're moving to the icing. I got this icing bag holder from Hobby Lobby for five bucks and it's amazing. It's super helpful um, holding um, different types of bags and it's just, it keeps everything organized instead of having your bags like just lying on the counter. And so we're gonna start with two pounds of sifted powdered sugar. So I had to use a spoon to really sift the powdered sugar. I don't know if you guys have this issue too, but powdered sugar when sifted tends to get a little bit staticky and it ju just jumps all over the place and it's super annoying. So to help with that, I'm using a spoon to um, push it through the sifter. And for two pounds of powdered sugar, I'm adding a half teaspoon of cream of tartar and this will help stabilize your royal icing. Next, we are using two tablespoons of meringue powder for every one egg white. So for this recipe, we're adding five egg whites. So that means we're going to do 10 full table teaspoons. We're doing teaspoons of meringue powder. And then for every two teaspoons of meringue powder, we're adding two tablespoons of warm water. The warm water will help dissolve the meringue mixture. So in total, you're going to have 10 teaspoons of meringue powder and 10 tablespoons of warm water. Once you add your meringue powder and warm water, add one teaspoon of vanilla. I also want to mention, I got my meringue powder from Michael's or Hobby Lobby, but you can also get it from Amazon. Okay, and mix all the ingredients. This base royal icing will be very thick. It will be much like a glue consistency. We're looking for that gingerbread icing look, um, something thick like that. And then from there, we're going to change the consistency from outlining to top coating to flooding with the different colors we're going to be using. 
Once you have the consistency that you're looking for, go ahead and add a damp cloth to your mixture because it will start to um, dry and create um, a layer of dried icing. So in order not for that to happen, go ahead and put a damp cloth. You want to keep that um, the bowl really moist so it doesn't create that, um, that hardened layer. And as you can see from me scooping the royal icing, it's very thick and very glue-like. So this is what we want our base royal icing to look like. So unfortunately, I only recorded myself making the black outlining royal icing, but I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know what I did for the top coat and the flooding consistency. So with each color, I did one cup of the base royal icing. For top coating, I used one one half to two and two half um, teaspoons of water. And then for flooding, I used two to three teaspoons water. I'm also going to leave this in the description below. So um, in case you don't see this entire video, you'll have that there. And as a rule of thumb, go ahead and test out your icing before putting it on the cookie. And I actually had to use my other hand to help guide my hand that was holding the piping bag so I could um, really get close to the edges and make straight lines because my hand was all over the place. <laughs> so. Um, if you really need help to study your hand, just use your other hand to help guide um, the royal icing. And you're going to have a beautiful cookie like this one. And honestly, the rest of the clips are me just um, icing the cookies. This is actually the next day I went ahead and packaged them. Make sure to leave out your cookies for about two hours just so the layer can dry. Um, you don't want to put um, cookies in a bag that have wet icing and that isn't fully dried or else they will stick to the bag and you do not want that happening after all your hard work. You want to make sure that the royal icing um, sits nicely and is dried thoroughly. So make sure that's the case before putting them in your packaging. I went ahead and put them in plastic baggies that you can get from Amazon or from um, these I got from Hobby Lobby. And just to recap, I'm also going to put everything I discussed down below in the description. And if you have any questions, please feel free to comment or just message me. Um, that's totally fine. Um, but this, I made 24 cookies about. It actually made a little bit more for extra. But um, just to recap the ingredients, I used two sticks of butter. Um, hold on. <laughs> Let me get this. Okay, two sticks of butter, two-thirds cup powdered sugar, one half teaspoon of vanilla, and two cups of flour. But I doubled that to make this many cookies. So just keep that in mind. And once they are packaged beautifully like this, go ahead and put them into in the fridge just to make sure that the icing, the full layer has hardened and it will just keep them fresh um, until they are ready to be eaten. And when they are ready to be eaten, they can be left out at room temperature. And of course, with any order, I add my business cards and a thank you letter.
and we are done look at these amazing cookies they came out so beautifully thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate every single one of you and if you do make this recipe or anything tag me in photos i would really like to be a part of that and to see what you have created so thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for my next video i'm on facebook instagram etsy and pinterest at olivia's home bakery